Uh, I think uh, Whiteheadians, uh, Lewis Ford, for example, who is the, the most celebrated commentator on, on the text of, of Whitehead, the writings of Whitehead, he said, Joe, you cannot have a trinity in a Whitehead system. You will end up with tritheism. You will have three gods because each subject of experience is an individual unto itself in Whitehead's scheme. On the other hand, if you go the other route and, and say that the persons are really manifestations of the one, uh, different empirical manifestations of the one God, you're into modalism. And, and, and the Christian tradition has uh, ultimately decided that the truth is not in either tritheism or modalism, but something in between that is very difficult uh, even, even until today to present as the, uh, a, a rationally intelligible middle ground. And I think it's only solved through something like a systems or process approach where systems can be incorporated into other systems and yet retain their own integrity. But uh, at the same time, uh, what many Whiteheadians, when I first started writing on the Trinity, uh, uh, as part of Whitehead's, uh, my version of Whitehead's God-world relationship, they, uh, they assumed that I was just trying to somehow artificially introduce the Trinity into Whitehead. And so I was, uh, it, it, in a sense, I was just a Catholic that didn't want to give up the doctrine of the Trinity. And eventually I convinced Cobb and others that no, the philosophical problem is not the Trinity. The philosophical problem is your, your own primitive understanding of societies. You do not recognize that every society is an objective reality over and above its constituent actual entities. If you accept that philosophical understanding of society, Trinity follows immediately as a theological corollary, but not necessarily something you have to believe to be a white Indian. You can say that the world is, uh, you know, the, uh, the super system rather than God is the super system. Uh, but the big thing is you have to have integrity of subordinate societies that, that add up and contribute to a super society as a governing structure of reality. So it is the problem of the one and the many. Uh, do you really have, you can't go to the priority of the one over the many, nor the simple priority of the many over the one, you have to have the dynamic interrelationship of one and the many with the one conditioning the many and the many conditioning the one. And Whitehead has that in process in reality when he talks about societies being dependent upon their constituents and yet in somehow governing the constituents. But he never developed that in the direction of even a, a stronger philosophical understanding of society as an objective reality. That was a gap in his thought. And Cobb eventually recognized that and, and said, you've done a, made a contribution philosophically to Whiteheadian scholarship by forcing us to think through what we mean by societies more carefully. And does this entail the notion of the emergence of new individuals? Well, it, it, in a certain sense, in this scheme, not only uh, we, but God too, is in some sense a new objective reality with every moment. And that makes sense. That what happens in the world does in its own way enrich the corporate reality of God as the divine life system. And that will be enhanced when, when and as the, the world gets absorbed back into God and all its own uh, finite richness to be compensated uh, itself by the infinite riches of the divine life. So you should focus not so much, in a certain sense, don't focus on the individual divine persons. Focus on their corporate reality as a life system that is a unity in diversity, dynamic diversity of members and then see the world as a subordinate unity in diversity of parts or members being progressively incorporated into the divine life system. That's the goal of, the, of creation as Teilhard de Chardin saw, so that the cosmic Christ, which is a corporate reality, all things are being drawn into the cosmic Christ as the end of creation.